Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Miss Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I'm going to be doing a Let's Play with Makeup and I'm going to be focusing primarily on some things that are new or new to me in this one, which is not what I usually do in a Let's Play with Makeup, but I think there's a lot to look at here that I've been wanting to play with on camera that I think that now would be a good time to do that. But if you are new here, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like the video, share it if you'd like like, do all of those things, merch, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get into the video. We'll do eyeshadow last because that's like where I have the most options and I feel like we're going to do some like hand swatching of some things for you there. I did say in my last video that I'm going to be using the Victoria Beckham one until it's gone before I start moving on to the Sisley, but this is more in line with what I was doing. I had someone ask some questions and I don't remember what all the questions were and I don't know that I have all of the answers. One of the main questions has been, does this mattify my skin at all? And I don't think it really does. And I I haven't found that it mattifies on top of makeup really either. I'm gonna apply it to half of my face and then we will zoom you in. We'll take a look. I'm gonna be using my Sonia G Smooth Buffer brush. I'm gonna put it on the right side of my face. And keep in mind that I will be buffing this into the skin. I was also asked if it has coverage and it certainly does. You can see how it smoothed out the redness compared to this side. I don't think it has a lot of coverage, but something that was said to me before I purchased this was that a lot of people who have fair skin that bought it in the original shade, because this is a newer shade of this, that it left a cast on them because it was too deep for them. I assume if you have deep skin that it will also leave a cast that is too light. So here is the side that ha that has the powder on it. Like I was digging my brush in there. And so here we are a little bit zoomed in and you can see how it just perfects the pores. So here's the side without it. Here's the side with it. I don't know if this one's more translucent. I don't feel like it gives me like a white cast, but I am pretty fair. So I don't know that I'm like a real good judgment of that, but I am glad I got this one instead of the original shade. And I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know they were going to release it, but I'm glad I waited because I almost bought it in the old shade before this one was released. It's not a ton, but it definitely like evens out my skin tone a bit. It's a very interesting, it's a very interesting formula to play around with because it's just like, what is happening? Like what, how does it do that? I feel like I've said this before a couple of times. I don't have any problems putting makeup over top of this. So like liquids, I don't have any trouble putting liquids over top of it. It's really weird, but yeah, you can still see a lot of shine, like even more so than if I use like the Charlotte Tilbury or the, you know, Chantecaille, which I do feel like powders me a little bit, but this is really interesting. I'm gonna use a powder foundation today. But before we do, I'm going to apply a little of, this was just sitting on my vanity, so I just am using it from my last video, but this is the Givenchy Prism Libre. And I'm not gonna use too much of it because of the powder foundation, but I figured we should do at least this liquid before we go in with a powder foundation. Now, I've only played with this powder foundation a couple of times, and the only time I wore it out, it didn't go disastrously, but it was raining and I feel like any makeup I would have worn that day would have been worse for wear, but I have liked it. You know what's so funny is I don't know if this is like a product that's like on its way out from Shondagai that we're going to be using next. It was like kind of hard to find when I linked it. So my friend Ananda, also known as Medium Olive on Instagram, sent this to me in some friend mail a while back. And this is the Chantecaille Compact Makeup in Bamboo. This is the shade. So it actually looks like it might be too deep and might be too yellow. Right on my neck, I am more yellow than I am like on my arms and on my face. And when I used it last, I didn't feel like it looked too crazy on me just for against my skin type. So I'm going to go in with the same brush and I'm going to apply it again to the right side of my face and then show you what it looks like. I have never worn powder foundation before I received this one. So I don't know that I'm going to be a very good person to say anything about this particular formula other than my experience with it. I can't really compare it to anything else because I never have used them before. Now I had one in my collection for a while. I had a powder foundation. It was the one from Smashbox that you had to like twist up the thing and it like ground the powder. I never really used it because I was like, I don't know that I'm ever going to use a powder foundation. Okay, so here it is on this side of my face. I think it has like a nice medium coverage and but like it also doesn't look really yellow like it does in here. Now Ananda has an olive skin tone so I do also see a little bit of green in here too but it works really nicely on me and you can definitely still see 
like the juicy plumpness of my freshly prepped skin underneath. Not only with the powder, but I did my skincare about an hour or two ago, so like my skin is still kind of plump from that. But I'll zoom you in so you can take a closer look. My skin doesn't look powdery at all, like when I'm looking at it in my mirror. Powder foundation's on this side. It definitely doesn't have as much coverage as the Givenchy concealer. You can see, like there's a difference there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit more, see if we can build this up a little bit and not look like super cakey. The thing is, I feel like I'm using a lot of it when I'm using it, but I don't know if that's normal. There you go. You can kind of, you can see, obviously, the side's more mattified now that I have the powder on. But here are my cheeks to kind of compare for coverage. But I still feel like it looks really good on the skin. It doesn't look, I guess, it doesn't look powdery, which is interesting. I know that Kelly Gooch is like a pretty big proponent of powder foundation. And I gotta say, like, I'm pretty impressed with it, but I don't know if, like, it's this one in particular or if I would like other powder foundations. So something I've been thinking about, actually, since I got it is this, is this going to be one that I'm going to keep in rotation? Or is it just going to be one that I test and I, too, pass along? I don't really know how often I'm going to use it. It's not something that's going to probably sit on the front of my mind when it comes to doing my makeup, just because everything I do makeup-wise is pretty much, like cream base at this point like I have a cream contour sitting in front of me and I could try that on top of this I just don't want to do that today it's a pretty good match I wouldn't have picked this shade and I'm sure that I mean I don't know if Ananda would have picked this shade for me had she not already had this and sent it my way but I'm very thankful that she did because there's like some points being made I just feel like it my skin looks really good very and it's just like that it's just like a nice, that's a nice finish. I do often go much dewier than this, so it's kind of nice to like have this matte look. As I mentioned in my last video, if you didn't watch it, Refer sent me some brushes. I was talking about the the length of the brushes and the ferrules, and someone said to me that these are Refer's travel brushes, and I don't, that can't be, that simply can't be true. I mean, it's a little bit shorter than the next brush. I have the bases, you know, sitting on my hand here. I don't think these are mini brushes. And if they are mini brushes, I'm a little bit scared to like, how big are their big brushes? Because I talked about how the ferrule went very far down, but I don't think these are mini brushes. You know, I could see the, that conclusion being come to for sure, but it's just like, I don't, I don't actually think that that's the case. So I'm going to take the number 22. These feel a little awkward in my hands. I'm not feeling like super confident using them like I don't know they feel awkward in my hands but I'm just gonna do some of the Gucci bronzer with it I do like the way it disperses product there's nothing wrong with it I'm not really complaining about it it just I don't like the way it feels in my hand the Gucci bronzer isn't new I don't have any bronzers that I'm like in my testing drawer right now I don't know what kind of eye look we're gonna end up with I think we're gonna go cool tone which is why I've, I'm kind of sticking with rosier things also today's I'm gonna get the opportunity to use some more of the brushes that refer sent to me let's continue so I did pull out this Oma fair lady blush which is something that khaki was kind enough to send to me so that's what that looks like it's kind of beigey it's a little bit dark I'm gonna use the number five brush from Refer to just apply it. I am a little nervous that it might pick up too much pigment, although as I'm dipping it in here, it's, it's taking some to, to show up on the brush, but. That worked really beautifully. So what I have been using recently to apply blushes has been the Sonia G Lotus Cheek. Very different brushes. This one is much less dense than this one, but and also the bristles are smaller. And I found that this gave me more of an airbrushed effect than that one does. So I think that's really nice. I feel like it picked up just the right amount of product. I do feel like I had to like throw my brush in there a little bit, but also I'm not super familiar with this blush formula still. So that might just be like the case for this blush too. Maybe it just takes a while to pick up. I quite like where we're at. This hair back here. I'm going to the salon tomorrow, so that should be fixed. We're just doing the sides. I think I'm going to go back to a fade. Last time we did a 
disconnect. I don't know what that means, but that was what my hair says. I was like, why don't we try a disconnect? And I said, sure, <laughs> what the, whatever that means. I need to pick out a highlighter. We'll just use the Rare Beauty one for lack of other, <laughs> other considerations. So I'm gonna use this number 18 brush. Let's see what they recommend. Impactful highlighter that's impossibly soft. This small cheek brush is slightly tapered and dense, perfect for quick applications of highlight, contour, and setting powder. So it's designed for highlighter. It kind of has, like, you know, it has that look. It has that tapered look. So let's see. I'm a little bit nervous because this highlighter is pretty potent. I think that picked up a little more of that highlighter than I would like. So I'm telling you what I'm using, not to say that mine is better, or it's just like, I'm showing you what I'm accustomed to. So I have been using this brush for a highlighter, for powder highlighter. It is the Sonia G Soft Cheek. They're just like very different beasts. This picks up so little product and just very lightly applies it. And while I don't dislike the way my highlight looks right now, I think it looks pretty good. It just is more than this one does. And with this highlighter in particular, I think it's just like, it's more than I would have wanted highlighter wise. Are we, is it, are we already at the eyes? We're really tearing through this today. I'm kind of keeping it more focused on the makeup because I feel like I told a story in my last video. Not that it really matters. I think all of you are here for the journey, <laughs> no matter what the journey is. Quick and easy skin whenever you're using all the powders. And I still feel like my skin looks really good. Okay, when it comes to eyeshadow, I have so much. So I bought some new things. I got some PR. I also have some friend mail. Let's go through some things that I purchased. I'm starting this journey trying a bunch of purple eyeshadows out. A bunch of like gray, lavender, lilac shadows out. I'm doing this project. I've decluttered a bunch of my eyeshadow palettes, but what I'm doing is like I'm doing like fond farewells with each one, where I do one eye with the palette that I'm getting rid of, and then one eye with all of the other makeup that I'm keeping in my collection. I'm seeing how close I can kind of get it, but also seeing if I like what I do better with, with that. Anyway, I'm departing all those palettes. However, there's one shade in one of the Pat McGrath palettes that I'm departing with that I'm very into. It's from Mothership One. It's this one shade. It's like the smoky, like, lilac lavender shade. Whenever the Sephora was having the sale, I went in and I bought some purple eyeshadows that I thought might give the vibe of it. I'm doing this for a video. I would never do this as a consumer. So that's something to keep in mind as I show you this. This isn't like bragging or whatever. So I bought three shadows from Sephora. I am gonna go into indie eyeshadows. I've already bought some K-Beauty and J-Beauty and I think some Chinese beauty eyeshadows for me to try to dupe, but What's gonna be really lovely for you as someone who watches my content is I'm going to be trying a bunch of eyeshadow formulas so you don't have to. And while they all might be purple, I'm gonna be able to speak to a bunch of different formulas to you by the end of this whole project. So let me show you what I've got. I bought the shade Fog from Hourglass from, yes, from, from their little very expensive self-making eyeshadow palette. So that's what that looks like in the pan. I feel like in the pan, it looks much more purple than it ends up looking in the swatches. It looks so... By itself, it looks so much more purple than it looked whenever I was swatching it against some other things. So there's that shade. It's a very pretty eyeshadow. Then I also bought one of Bobbi Brown's Longwear Cream Shadow Sticks, and this is in the shade... It's called Dusty Mauve. It's not Amethyst. But the description calls it, like, a, a dusty lilac, which is what I would consider that shade from Pat McGrath to be. But the funny thing is, it's basically the same shade as this Hourglass. Just a little more red. But it's not purple. It's certainly not purple. But I'll get to try the formula. And then I also bought this from Danessa Myricks. This is the Color Fix Liquid Metal in the shade Lilac Flame. Which I knew was not going to be smoky. But I figured it might be one of those things where if I bought it and I tried it, it might be the Pat McGrath shade. But like on X Games mode, you know? And I wore this in my last Critical Sass. Look at that. That is so... Pretty. Look at that swatch it left on my finger. Oh, I sound like I sound like I sound like the child I live with. He makes that noise a lot. As I continue swatch, there's gonna be a lot of excess sparkle from the one from Danessa Myricks. So far, of the three, I haven't put these two on my eyes yet, but like this is a real killer. This is a real winner. I love that this shade is very cool, very, very pretty. A little bit of a story time. I was in Philly a couple weeks ago, as you know. They have blue mercuries in Philadelphia, and we don't have those in Pittsburgh. But I know what they are. Like, I just have never been inside of one. Or if I have, I was in Chicago, and I, like, did, you know, it was one of those things where it was just, like, I was with other people who weren't into makeup, so we didn't go into the makeup store. I went to Blue Mercury. They had a Shantikai display, and I swatched a, 
all of them. <laughs> I swatched all of them. And the one that I liked the best when I was swatching them was the shade Zebra. Now, I do not understand, and I've heard Kaki talk about this before, I don't understand what magical lighting they have in Blue Mercury, but it's not right. So, here is the shade. I've gotten into it. I've worn this quite a few times um, since I've gotten it. When you look at it in the pan, I just feel like it's like what feels so special about it. And then I feel like when you swatch it is like really where the magic comes out. But still, even there, I feel like you don't really get to see it. But there is just... A, a beautiful, elegant sparkle to this that is kind of like unmatched from any like luxury eyeshadow that I've tried before. I'm going to do like one directional lighting. When it's on your eye, I feel like it does catch all of that. Like it catches all of those nuances and all those sparkles. It's just one of those things, it's like very hard to catch on camera. It's just, it's a little bit of a different kind of eyeshadow, but I think it's really, really pretty. I don't know if it was worth $54, but I had Beautylish points and it was my birthday. And I was like, let me treat myself to this. And um, so far, so good. I've been getting on with it. In friend mail, my friend Nicole sent me this. This is the Natasha Denona Lila palette. Now, here's how I ended up with this. I didn't know that Nicole had this. She's never revealed this to me. She's never given this to me as an option for something whenever she's whenever she's getting rid of stuff. Because Nicole's very ruthless. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should follow her on Instagram. She's a very ruthless reviewer. Like a ruthless reviewer. This was like not her favorite thing. And she was like, I just never touched it and I've had it for a couple years. So she sent it my way, which we might use in conjunction with something that Surratt sent me. So Surratt recently launched these guys. These are the Souffle eyeshadows. I was allowed to choose three. So I chose Pluie Mauve, uh, Gris Dew, and Nuage d'Argent. And let's get into it because these are the weirdest little things. This is the shade Gris Dew. I don't remember what Gris Dew was described as. And I don't know if it was described as like green or not, but I feel like it is kind of green. And then, so they're souffle, so they kind of like boing, like boing. Like it's so weird. And so, so far what I have found with them is that you kind of like rub your finger in a circle and when you do that, it like pushes the product around. Like it's kind of like jello. And then that, you get that. Now that was way more swipes than I usually do. Here's the swatch. <laughs> I have worn these a couple of times since I've gotten them. So that swatch is kind of like, what's kind of happening there? Let me swatch the other ones for you. Here's Pluie Mauve. This one has been my favorite so far because I've just been into like the cool tones recently. It does kind of look pretty berry-y. I'm just going to show you this texture. Like I can't like emphasize enough how weird this is. Like it just... It bounces back, but there's that on my finger. Now look at look at the remnants of Gris Dew. It's so pretty. And then, okay, so here's Pluie Mauve, and that was from that swatch. And then look at my finger. Here is the last shade. This is Nuage d'Argent, which is a, a nice taupe. They're wet. Like I I can't emphasize enough. They like they feel like you're touching Jello. They feel like they're they like they boing. So there's that on the finger. And then <laughs> here's a swatch. Okay. So that it's like, is what is happening. We'll talk more about them in a second. I'm going to use the Lila palette to build some mattes and then we will top it with one of these. We won't use any of the shimmers from the Natasha Denona palette. We'll focus on these. I think we either should use Nuage d'Argent, which is like the last one I put on, or Pluie Mauve, which might make the most sense for this. I did want to use one of the other shades because I've worn Pluie Mauve a couple of times so far because I like really like the shade of it because I think it's a pretty cute shade. I'm going to prime my eyes with some translucent powder and the smudge base eyeshadow. Smudge proof. What? What is with me? The clip cloud clap clay and the smudge proof eyeshadow base from Dars. I'm gonna prep my eyes with this and then I will use the Lila palette. We'll talk a little about the, about the Lila palette. I'm gonna be using the some of the brushes that were sent to me by Ruffer as I build my eyeshadow look today. My usual mirror is not up here because I always use that Chantecai one. Okay so I'm gonna start with the Ruffer 15 and start playing with... I do need to get 
a hand mirror. I want to get like a vintage hand, like a vintage hand, uh, hand mirror to do my makeup on camera. Whenever this palette came out, whenever it initially launched, I was into the beauty sphere because I believe that this came out, like, I feel like this was the, the release that followed the Sunset palette, and I already had the Sunset palette, but I was actually much more into purples at the time, and I remember whenever I saw this palette, I was completely enamored with it, but I never ended up with it. Now, I don't think that has anything to do with my willpower <laughs> at the time, because this was, you know, in the before conscious consumerist Tom that was like, in my before times, it was probably just from like a lack of funds to be able to purchase it. Now that I have it in my hands, it is a very pretty palette, but it's not at all kind of like what I was expecting. Like there's berry tones in it. I've had my papoos about <laughs> berry toned eyeshadows. The thing that it ha doesn't have that I wish it did is the texture of the gold palette. So I think if I would have gotten this at the time it released, I think I would have been like very pleased with it. Well, the shimmers are really pretty. I don't think that they're anything to write home about. Like, they're interesting colors, especially interesting colors for the time, and like, it's an interesting color story altogether. I'm not gonna lie to you. So far, my experience with these rougher brushes is I don't really like the eyeshadow ones, but I do kind of like the face ones. It's kind of, it's been my experience so far. I just feel like there's not enough give to them. I think think they are too densely packed. I'm gonna do some research though because I haven't really looked up what they're for. Like I'm, I have this feeling, I haven't tried them yet with my Victoria Beckham eyewears, but I feel like in my heart of hearts that they would do really well with a cream eyeshadow just based on how stiff they are. They're, it's just the Wayne Goss brushes that I often use, they're like not as densely packed as these ones. And I feel like they pick up less product and I feel like I'm doing more of like a watercolor situation as opposed to like instantly going like bam shazam, you know? Uh, and these ones, I feel like they just pick up a lot of pigment. I've tried them with a couple different formulas at this point, and I don't know that I've liked them with any. I'm gonna take a little bit of a shimmer as like an eyeliner along the lash line. I don't have any brushes shaped like this from, um, this one's from Ruffer, it's the 23. So I think this is a nice, this is a cute little like smudging liner brush, and I feel like it is allowing me to get right up in there. So as I was saying, having this now and having experienced some other Natasha Denona palettes, I feel like I can say with confidence that like there's just so much noise happening right now. My neighbor is blowing leaves. The child is upstairs and I'm trying to film. No, I'm not really mad at the child. I guess I'm not really mad at my neighbor either. It's just kind of like really right in front of my salad. It's, so when you look at this color story, it's real. It's like it is really pretty, but you can see there's like a lot of lack of texture. I would say the most textured shadow is this one right here. And they all kind of live. The mattes don't. They look like they do, but like the mattes are kind of in true Natasha Denona fashion. They show up a little bit darker on the skin than you're expecting them to. So I use that one as my transition and I use that one as my crease today. And then I used that one with that little right along the lash line. Let me pull out the gold palette. Obviously my gold palette is much more worn in and well loved, but you can definitely just like tell texture wise how much more is happening in the gold palette versus like what Natasha Denona did in this one. But they're really pretty shimmers and I, you know, I like the quality of the Natasha Denona formula. I know that not everyone loves it. I have to keep playing around with it. I don't know what the fate of it would, would be long term. Um, but what I will say, I think if you missed out on this and it's something that you've yearned for for a long time, it's not my favorite Natasha Denona palette I've ever tried. And I'm saying that removing the colors from it. I just mean like, it's it's not giving Natasha Denona at her best as far as like texture, which I think is really important when it comes to something like this. Because if you are given something with four mattes, which are all the same texture, and then you also are given one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You're given eleven shimmers that have the same textures essentially as well, but in different shades. It's just not really intriguing to do an eye look. I mean, you could do very pretty eye looks, but they're gonna feel pretty simple. I just feel like eyeshadow intrigue has moved beyond this kind of eyeshadow format, if that makes sense. These are actually water-based, these Surat eyeshadows. I'm gonna zoom you in too. Whenever something's water-based, it, it means it normally can be removed with water. Here's 
what I will tell you is that I did like a little bit of a wear test with these and it did not crease on me for four hours and I have really oily lids. I slapped it right on my lids. Like I slapped it right on my lids. And then I've also worn it for four hours on top of like other eyeshadows and it didn't budge at all. And during my wear testing of them, the, like whenever I just put it on my bare lids, I was talking to Khaki about it and she was like, lick your finger and run it through your eye. And it didn't budge. It's, it's a very confusing formula. So I'm going to circle around in here pretty good. I gotta tell you, the consistency of this is pretty yucky to me. I don't really love the consistency. Something that you need to be aware of if you do decide to use these or just to know about them is that I don't know that you have to work super fast, but you have to do a very good job blending out the edges because once it, it feels like it's set, it is not really gonna move. Even when you add more. Okay, so that's one layer of it. And so what you can see is it's a very sheer and very sparkly. You can build them up, but it's one of those things where you have to like let it dry, then layer more. Otherwise, you're putting more water on it and you're just kind of like moving around things. I'm going to put one application on this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the application up to three times on this eye after that. And so we can see one application versus three to see how built up it actually gets and what it looks like when you put it on three times. Here is one application on both eyes. It's really pretty and really, sh it's like this beautiful sheer wash of color. And sometimes, you know, I feel this way about Surratt's powder eyeshadows and I also feel this way about their liquid blushes where it's just like very ethereal very like it but also kind of feels lived in it kind of looks like I've it's like eyeshadow that I've had on for a really long time that kind of has worn off in like a very beautiful way and like I'm kind of left with sparkle I'm gonna apply a second round to my right eye here is two applications versus one it's still drying a little bit, but it looks like less of a wash for sure. Whenever I just put it on my bare skin when I was like testing them out, the one shadow I did, it was the first one I put on. So I, I it was like a, a learning curve a little bit. The first one I put on, I like didn't blend this one portion out and it just looked like that. It was just, you could tell, you could tell. So like these don't feel like very, like they don't feel very like beginner friendly to me, but that is again, one coat, two coats. All right. Let's go in for coat number three. So there's three. And now it's looking like something special. Well, not that I think this also looks really special, but it's, you know, it's like kind of nothing compared to that. Look at that. Look at that. Even on that eye, even on the one coat. I'm gonna make the other eye match and then we will carry on. I'm gonna align my eyes with the Victoria Beckham eyeliner in Ash. I think that these Surratt shadows are in the $50 range. And I would love to report to you that I think that they are a gimmick. But the thing is, so far my experience has been that they performed very well. They're just like really strange and they, they fall in line with that whole like Surratt just kind of like doing something strange. I certainly have never touched a formula like this. I would say the thing that cl a closest I've tried before has been maybe a, a Super Shock Shadow from ColourPop. It's been a long time since I used one of those. These feel like a little bit different to me, but that might just be because of like, these are in like much deeper pots and I know the Super Shock Shadows are in pretty shallow pans. That's kind of like the vibe and I feel like that's the effect that they give too. Now, my experience with the Super Shock Shadows is that they would crease on me and these ones don't. They, like once they dry, they're pretty set and I found that the ColourPop ones were like more malleable. It's like Surratt's answer to ColourPop in a very expensive manner. I've done a whole video on Surratt products. I've tried a lot from the brand. The brand was kind enough to send me a lot of stuff to try and I did like a full brand deep dive. This is one of those things where it's like a gimmick but works. Now I didn't love the smoky eye batons. 
it kind of has that same kind of like lived in grungy feeling. There's six shades I think of this total so I have I have half the range here. I'm curious to see some other people who got these and what shades they got and see how those shades work but so far this pluey mauve has been really has really really digging my dog. I do have a promo code with Surratt so if you ever want to buy something from them my promo code's HOPE15. Now, I'm never saying that you need to run out and buy anything. Obviously, you know how this channel goes. It's just one of those things, if you should be purchasing from Surratt already, there is a promo code for you. It saves you 15%. I know that Surratt's expensive and it's not for everyone. I receive these in PR and I try to keep be very mindful whenever I'm like talking about and like reviewing something. And I, I'm saying reviewing because like I'm still kind of early dazing it with these. I do try to keep in mind, I don't know that. I would pay $54 for these. Like, I'm having a lot of fun playing with them. I think they're a really unique formula. And if you think unique formulas are worth the value, like a higher price point just because they're different, I think you might enjoy these. If you are someone who doesn't have a need for a souffle eyeshadow, and now that I've talked about them, you like are minorly interested in. I don't know. I think I have powder eyeshadows that could look like this. I think it's really pretty. Like, I think it's really, I think all of them are really pretty, but like, I also have other eyeshadows that could do this. <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, it's not so wildly unique that I think you need to like run out and buy them right away. But I think they're cool. I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun with them. My friend Cam, also known as Clove Room, go check their channel out. They sent me a, what are these called? an ultra lip from Glossier when they sent me the skin tint and hmm. that certainly looks like a shade I would wear. It looks a little warm. It is my favorite color of lip product. Brown. So let's let's put it on. I mean if it doesn't look good it's fine. We can always wipe it off and we can always put something else on. I've been really into these like glossy lip thick. So the last lip product I tried from Glossier was Generation G was that what it was called and it was like their matte lip balm this is much better than that I did not like that product at all and I still think to this day if I tried that product again I wouldn't like it but this is very in line with like <laughs> the candy glaze from YSL it kind of has like a similar vibe to that I don't know that it doesn't go with this and I'm just gonna leave it as is I'm gonna throw on some mascara we'll like kind of walk through everything one more time even though I am wearing powder foundation I don't feel like I look powdery enough to warrant actually spraying my face like to like you know sometimes you put too much powder on you're like oh a little bit of spritz will do I don't think I need to do that let's start from the beginning the Sisley powder continues to intrigue and impress me and I still don't quite understand its mystical magical powers <laughs> there will be a video where I like kind of go into it'll be just about this and the Chantecaille and I need to get my hands on that covergirl one too the, there's a covergirl one that someone told me was a dupe for the Chantecaille one and then we'll do another battle of the blur powder foundation I think it looks really gorgeous and I don't have any foundations in my repertoire right now that have a soft matte finish and like this definitely provides that but I definitely don't think it like deadened my skin I think it has nice coverage I think it's a good match I think it looks really good on me I actually really like it I think it's so important to keep in mind that I don't wear a lot of powder foundation I can't compare this to anything I can't see I don't know what makes a good or a bad foundation formula when it comes to a powder all I know is that I I have been enjoying it I have I have enjoyed it I'm not gonna lie to you and that might be due to the fact that I do have oily skin so maybe a little bit of the mattification but I also like the glow like I still feel like you know I'm a little bit you know I have a little bit of a glow going on and I use a pow I use a powder to prime and I use this on top so I think that's pretty cool. The refer brushes, I think that the eyeshadow brushes I'm not sold on yet. Uh, I need to still try it with a bunch of more formulas and I'm wondering if also the sh like I, I messed myself up on the shapes but they feel just like much firmer. They feel like um they feel just much more densely packed than what I'm used to when it comes to an eyeshadow brush and it really I think is inhibiting how I do eyeshadow. I just don't think that these are really good for the way that I like to do eyeshadow. If, and I'm not saying this is a negative way, but if you are more heavy handed with your eyeshadow and you like a more pigmented punch, then I think you might like the refer brushes a little bit more than I have as far as eyes go. I'm still playing with them, so TBD. However, the face brushes, I liked a lot. They are also more dense than what I'm used to, but I think that they all applied product really beautifully. I'm not sure that I would use this brush again specifically with the Rare Beauty highlighter, but I have other powder highlighters that I would try, definitely try this with. Specifically ones that I think that are a little harder to pick up with a more soft brush, so I'm gonna try it with that to see if I can get that to work. But I really like this bronzer brush. Don't know that I love it more than my Sonia G one, but I 
I really like it. And then I actually really like this for my blush. Like this is the number five. The number five is one that it's like I, I could see myself buying multiples in order to have a bunch of clean ones. So this one's really good. I do really like the refer five. The Natasha Denona eyeshadows. They're Natasha Denona eyeshadows. So if you know, you know. So I'm not going to get too far into that. And then, you know, I just talked all about these souffle eyeshadows. So I, I stand by what I said and I think they're really pretty and really kind of cool really kind of unique very interesting anyway if you made it all the way to the end of my video and you haven't figured out what my vibe is and you're not yet subscribed let me just give you a brief rundown my channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it is currently while being very cynical and discerning about what makeup I choose to buy and how I talk about makeup I want to build a habit I want to help you build a habit about being very discerning about what you choose to buy because the makeup companies aren't our friends in the end and a lot of us not all of us have makeup already in our repertoire that we can use to scratch the itch of that new thing that we think we want. So if that sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure to like this video again before you leave it. I'm on patreon.com slash hopemesstom if you want to take your support to that level. You don't have to support me monetarily. It's just an option. I do additional content over there such as my podcast with my friend Kaki of Kaki Reviews Beauty and I also do additional content just me, myself, and I. So you can check that out if you would like. I also have merch that I released a couple weeks ago so you can check that out down below there's barba papa merch so if you haven't seen it check it out and that's that you can follow me on instagram if you'd like you know you don't need to do that either that's that remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me i'll see you in a video very soon Bye bye forever